In this video, I want to give an introduction to Beautiful Soup. So, what is Beautiful Soup in Python? Well, it comes from a package or a module, can't remember if it's a package or a module, named BS4, right? And it's essentially just used in web scraping. So you're probably wondering, okay, that's cool, but what is web scraping? Um, why do I care? All right. So if you want to understand this properly, you probably need to have an understanding of HTML, um, i.e. how websites work, how website documents are made. If you don't understand that, you know, you can follow along and try, but do understand you're probably at a bit of a disadvantage. So this is the site that I want to scrape. And before, you know, we scrape it, you might want to know what scraping is. So you can see this is a website called Quotes to Scrape, and it's basically made for people who want to learn how to web scrape, the basics of web scraping. It's very easy to scrape. And what web scraping is, is essentially getting things out of a web page or a website um, without having to manually copy and paste them. So, for example, if we look at this quote here, we might want to get this exact quote, or we might want to get the name of the artist which is albert einstein the name of the person who made the quote we could do that by simply copy and pasting this and this and then we could get jk rowling copy and pasting this and this but this is going to take us a very long time especially if this website's let's say you got ten thousand pages of quotes we are going to be here for half a lifetime doing that right so what a web scraper does is it essentially, you know, figures out where something is inside of a web page or what sort of tag it's in. And it can extract like text, it can extract, uh, you know, the eyes, it can extract all kinds of things from a website. And you could, if you knew how many total pages there were, for example, this is page one. And this is page two. You could just extract from every single page, providing that the website allowed you to do that okay now one thing i want to get into is web scraping may or may not be legal depending on where you're from your laws and you know the permissions of the website uh, that you're trying to scrape from they may completely disallow web scrapers now some websites have what called robots.txt i'm reading this here i don't really fully understand them but basically they tell you what you can and can't scrape and what you know essentially third-party robots are allowed to do with the website okay if you're in a country like ecuador or kazakhstan where they don't have hacking laws or they don't have laws regarding data protection that's great you can probably do what you want but you know i, I try to discourage people from doing that so you're probably thinking how do we scrape um you know these this this text uh this artist name etc etc well if you don't understand html this is going to be a bit complicated if you do understand html all you've got to do is inspect this web page and you'll see that this text here is actually inside a span class uh, called text right so it's inside a span called text and all we need to do is get every single span with a class of text here or a div class with quote and we get the text from inside of each span so this next span is probably going to have the same name not entirely sure we'll have a look yeah span class equals text so we could get for every single item in the page of we could find every single span with a class of text and we could extract the text from that span class thereby getting all of the quotes right and the way we do this is we get the, you know, the the actual web page itself, and we convert it into something called a soup object, and the soup object will contain, you know, all of these different tags. These are called tags, HTML tags, and you can use a, a function called find all to get all of one tag. Now, if it's something that's got multiple pages and all you have to add is page one, page two, up to page 100, for example, you can put for i in range 100 page and you just update the page you replace one with two with three with four for each iteration right and as long as the span tags are in the same place 
you can basically get this text from every one of them. Right, some of you probably looked at that and thought, look, I really didn't understand that. I'm really sorry, friend, but that didn't make any sense. Okay, that's not a problem. I guess I'll show you practically how to get, um, I guess, links, because these are, these are actually web links here. Like, I can log in, I can go to any sort of quotes, tag group love, blah, 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 blah. So we'll get all the web links on this page here, right? Now, first of all, if you don't already have a beautiful soup, well, BS4, you're going to need to pip install it. If you don't have requests, you'll also need to pip install that. Now, I've spoken about that, so I won't show you how to do that. But I will type out your imports, and these are what you need to pip install if you don't have them. So first of all, you'll need to import requests. And you probably have requests. It's usually installed with most standard things now. But it's a possibility you don't, so you'd have to pip install that. And another thing you'll have to pip install is BS4. And we're going to import beautiful soup from it. Oh. E E A beautiful soup. There we are. So pip install request if you don't have it, and pip install BS4 if you don't have it, and you import beautiful soup from BS4. Okay. So we're going to run that just so we've got all our imports. And all we've got to do is we've got to get this page here. So what's the URL. It's quotesofscrape.com slash page one. It's actually not. When we copy and paste this, it's probably going to be HTTP or HTML. And we're going to say that our page is equal to requests.get. And inside of this get, we actually put the URL, right? So our URL is HTTP quotesofscrape.com page one. We need to put this as a string, so we actually need to put this in single quotation marks or double quotation marks. And I'm actually going to print this page, okay, so you can just see what it is. So let's just uh, request get that. It'll take a little while to get it. And when we print the page, we actually get a response 200. And you would probably be expecting uh, us to get basically either this because you're not so adept at html or if you have some understanding of html you're probably expecting us to get all of these uh, tags within the html right but that just isn't oh man i'm so thankful of that i was looking at all these squished up tags you're probably expecting all these tags these tags are inside of the page that we get from requests but when we ask for the page we just get response whatever now when you're loading up um, websites you may have noticed before that you've had errors maybe a 404 error which is a not found error um, or you'll get you know a response 200 which if you're actually loading up a website you won't see a response 200 you'll just get the website a response 200 just means that the web server has taken your request and it's going to give you the website right so when you print page, you want to have this response 200. Another way you can find out the uh, response is simply to just print out page dot not not header sorry page dot status code right, and this will give you the status code, which hopefully is 200. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you like a bad request right. We're going to request a website that hopefully doesn't exist right and the website is just we're just going to call it there a bunch of a bunch of names it, it probably doesn't exist right so we're going to get that and it says invalid url no schema supplies perhaps you meant http whatever we'll actually call this page two right and you can see that it just it just simply hasn't run because it doesn't have a http Okay, not a problem. We'll uh, we'll just give it a HTTP and we'll see if it runs. It may not. It may not because essentially it's not a real website. I imagine so. I hope it's not a real website because uh, I'm just scraping a random website then. So it's got our request, right? But there's an error, okay? Max retries exceeded. 
caused by a new connection, failed to establish a new connection, get address info failed. So what's happened here is the address just likely doesn't exist, so we failed to get it because of that. I can't remember, I think this is a 404 error not found or something like that, or a 5045. Anyway, it's some type of error. So take care when you copy and paste and make sure you're using you know web addresses that actually exist. Alright? I'm just gonna continue on now so we've seen the status code we've seen all that now what we want to see is the headers so we're going to print page dot headers right when we print this out basically you get like the time that you've made the request to get the website content type all this kind of information now if you're new to html and just you know web services in general don't worry so much about this, but if you aren't new to it, there you go. That's how you get the headers, right? And you're all probably thinking, well, that's really cool. I can know, you know, if the request is successful, if it was a 200 code that I got from page.statuscode, and if the get actually worked, that's really cool. But, you know, I actually want the web page. I want the content, right? So the page content can be got quite simply, and I'm going to put it into a variable called page content just by simply getting page.content all right and we'll print this out as well. we'll print out page underscore content and why don't you guess what you're going to see if you've done html you'll probably get it straight away that's right so you see all of these weird kind of things that are wrapped up in these arrows i've forgotten the name of these arrows it doesn't really matter these are all, if you actually look at the inspect, these are all the tags of the HTML. So this is actually the uh, the website document that we see here. That's its actual code that we're getting, right? So the doc content gives you what the code would look like, right? And it basically just gives you a text version of that whole uh, website. Because if you notice here, you don't see the actual website and if there's any images or anything associated with it, you don't see it. You just get, you know, its structure, its entire structure. That's what you actually get. So you don't get a live website. You actually get, like, um, the content of uh, a live website rather than the website itself, okay? Now, we want to put this so that we can manipulate it with beautiful soup into what we call a soup object. So we're going to say that our soup is equal to B E A beautiful soup, which is actually the function that we're going to use. And we're just going to simply put our page content as the argument. Quite quite simple it is. So here's our page content turned into a soup object. Very easy. And now we want to get all of the links, for example. So I said originally that we want to get all of these links, such as the about, uh, the link to this quotes to scrape site, which is essentially a link to itself. I'm not sure why that's there. And if we actually look at these on inspect, they're inside of an A tag, okay? Otherwise known as an anchor tag, right? If I look at login again, we'll see that login is inside an A tag. So where these arrows start and end and there's another arrow start and end those are a tags anything between these two a's is the text or the content of the a tag right so how do we get an a tag well let's say we just want one right so we want one link we'll call it link first because this method gets the first link we're going to use our soup object which is essentially you know a bunch of content that we've got turned into a soup object, a bunch of HTML content turned into a soup object, right? And we're going to use the dot notation and we're going to use the find function on it. And we're going to use this A tag and we're just going to put it in there and we're going to print this out. We're just going to print it out just going to print this out and we should get the first a tag 
So here we go. The first A tag, A href, quotes the scrape, right? If we look here at the first link and we inspect it, you'll see that this is exactly the same as this here, right? So we've basically got the first link. We don't actually want, though, all these tags and all this kind of stuff. We just want to know the name of the link, for example, right? We just want to know it's called quotes to scrape, right? So in order to do that, because this is actually text in HTML, we essentially just say print link underscore first dot text. And here we're going to get the text of the A tag that we've extracted using the find function, right? And you see it just prints out quotes to scrape. Probably thinking that's really cool and all, but I want every single link here. I want this login link you know i want uh, these top 10 tags links i want these tag links here i want this about i want all of these links okay i don't just want you know one link i want every single link you've got okay and there's a way of doing that with beautiful soup so we're going to make a variable to put all of our links into and we're going to call them link underscore anchors because in HTML, these A tags, they're actually called anchor tags, which is what we're getting. We're going to say soup.find underscore all. And the tag that we want to get is an A tag. So we're saying find every single A tag, please. And we want to print those A tags out just to see what we're working with. Now, just remember when we print the A tags out raw, we're going to get them as full tags. We're not going to get the content of them. We're just going to get the full tags. Right? So let's print those out. And you see I've got loads of A tags. right? And some of them might have tags within them. Some of them don't. I, I think these don't actually have tags within them. But you know, you can see we've got lots of A's. right? So it starts with A and it finishes with A. We've got loads of A tags. But we probably want the text from all these A tags. And you'd maybe think, well, all we have to do here is print link underscore anchors dot text. This isn't going to work. But I'll run it and then I'll explain to you why it's not going to work. And it says results set object has no attribute text. You're probably treating a list of items like a single item. Did you call find all when you meant to call find? Now, I didn't call find all when I meant to call find, but it is right that we're, we're treating a list of items like a single item. So when you use find all, it actually returns, I think it returns an array, you know? So what we have to do is we actually have to go through the link anchors, because link anchors is an array of A tags. And we have to say for I in link underscore anchors print i dot text okay and then we're going to get every single item um, from oh it might be a set i don't know from the set or the list whatever and we're going to get the text of each item because we can't just get you know a whole array the whole array doesn't have a text property the individual items in it have a text property and that's what we're going to get and you can see here, we've actually got these link names. So we start with quotes to scrape and login. So we're at quotes to scrape, then we've got login. And then it'll go to this about with Albert Einstein, and we'll get this change, deep thoughts, thinking, and world tags. Yeah, so we've got login, change, deep thoughts, thinking, and world. And it'll keep going through here, and then it'll get the next tag. So if you keep looking, it'll keep saying about, about, and it'll have all these little tags underneath it and we'll eventually get to next after the last about okay so here's our next which is actually this this is the uh, a tag and then it, it starts showing us these tags essentially right so we've got where is it we've got love inspirational life humor etc etc you can see we successfully got every single a tag and all the dot tags of the a tags Right, I'm sorry about that. That was a very long introduction, but it was necessary for you to gain a basic understanding of how to web scrape with uh, beautiful suit.
Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy.